You're listening to the Home Education Podcast.uk, your number one stop for home education stories, adventures, tips, and ideas. We're a family of five living and learning in the northeast of England. You're very welcome to join us from wherever in the world you may be. It was supposed to be very sunny today, but unfortunately, it rained quite a bit. But what can you expect? from an autumn day in November in the United Kingdom. Not much. Firstly, I'd like to apologise for last week for our lack of podcast. It was a bit of a disaster from start to finish. And then right at the end, just when we thought we'd mastered it, we actually lost half of the podcast right at the last second, just prior to publication. So our apologies about that. And uh, rest assured, we will try harder to sort out our technical difficulties this week so that it doesn't happen again. On today's show, we talk about baby G turning 18 months old. We uh, have a little chat about Remembrance Day. We talk about our pets and what they like to eat. Um, And join Frogger and Todd for their scores of the week. Joining me today, we've got Frogger. Hello. How are you today, Frogger? Fine. And how old are you? Seven. Great. Welcome to you, even though you're here. So welcome to the show. Anyway, (laughs) uh, Todd, how are you today? Hello, my name is Todd and I'm six, seven and junior 25th. Excellent. Six-year-old and a seven-year-old. We also have baby G in the background who is rummaging around with boxes at the moment and uh, playing with some medals that we've got hanging up. So if you hear any jangling and uh, rummaging, then you know what that actually is. Okay, so let's talk about baby G, our smallest little girl turned 18 months old last week and a lot has happened between now and when we first told the children that we were going to have another baby. Now Toad, what was your reaction when we first said that we were going to have another baby? Well we thought mummy and daddy were lying. Your actual words were you're joking. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much and uh, Frogger, what were you expecting when we said that? Um... From just watching TV um, with programmes about having a little brother and a little sister of someone who, or whoever, um, and they're causing a real, um, they're getting up into trouble, um, I thought it would be like that. You thought that a baby brother or sister was going to cause mayhem and mischief and disrupt your life? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, she's here now and she's um, actually quite nice. She's quite nice. How do you feel about her now? She's really nice and I really like having her around. Brilliant. How about you, Toad? Mm Mm-hmm. Same. (laughs) The same. Okay. Um, So, yeah, happy 18-month birthday to Baby G. You are an absolute treasure. So, if we're thinking about our home educating, when your family dynamics change, As they often do, um, sometimes with um, great happy news, such as the arrival of a baby, um, unfortunately, sometimes with sad news as well. How do you keep going? How do you ensure that it works under the new dynamics? Well, in our experience, I think just plodding forward helps. Take it one day at a time and be flexible about what you're doing. We are constantly changing our schedule, the way that we work during the day and quite often I'll do a little bit of work with the children and then set them off and allow them to work independently whilst I'm looking after baby G. How do you think it works Frogger with baby G whilst you're doing your work? Um, You barely notice it half the time. Which is pretty good isn't it? Yeah. So it didn't have to be too disruptive did it? So anybody who's out there who was thinking well I can't have another baby because we won't be able to home educate my eldest children is they'll that's just rubbish really you adapt uh, baby g at the moment as usual right on cue is pulling a lot of books off the bookshelf um i don't think she's reading any of them perhaps just taking the covers off and destroying and destroying everything there's also a giant fly in here which uh We're currently chasing around with the fly swat and it keeps disappearing. That is the second one today. I wonder if it's because the weather is a little bit milder this week. Um, So therefore maybe they've come down because they're all a bit slow still. Speaking of the weather, we decided last week when it was very cold to do some mystery science. And what we did was we became weather watchers. Here's how we got on. The sky is blue. Can you see any blue outside though? No, no. Oh. 
No, that's right. What um, colour is the sky? White. White. A bit. Well, it's not quite white. Yes, that's right. I would say it's more grey. Why do you think it's grey? Because it's a raining. Because rainy. it's raining. So, thinking about our four parts of the weather, we've looked in the sky. We cannot see the sun unless it's hiding somewhere. Can you see it? Nope, I can see a lady though. There's a lady. Okay, so what is the lady wearing? Whilst we're looking out the window, a let's jumper. see if we can solve some clues. A jumper, jeans and scarf. Jumper, jeans, scarf. So, what might that tell you about what the weather is like outside? It's cold. Middle. It's kind of cold and it's kind of warm. It's kind of cold, it's kind of warm. There's another gentleman coming past now. What is he wearing? Gloves, trousers, what boots mm -hmm. and a coat. So, what, do we th what can we gather from looking at him? What do we think about the temperature? It's cold. It is cold. Oh, oh dear, baby G, what's up? Oh, all the, all the dice all over the floor. Okay, yes, we can pick them all up again. Yeah. Okay, so we've looked in the sky and we've found out it's not a sunny day. It's in fact very, very cloudy. We've been looking at the people going past and we can tell what temperature it is by them going past because they are wearing gloves and trousers and jumpers and scarves and coats. So we know that it's cold. What can we do to see whether it's windy or not? What can we look at? Trees. The trees? Okay, Frogger, what are the trees doing? They're sort of blowing, but um, they're not blowing that much. I guess it's not very windy. Yeah, what do you think, Toad? Well, the trees have um, got any leaves on them, some of them. Is there anyone that I can see with you, Sorry. Yeah, what? Does that tell you about the weather or does that tell you about something else? Mm, if it's the leaves. kind of cold. Yeah. Mm. And. Um, so why, why are there no leaves on the trees? Because it's turning into autumn. Because it's autumn, yeah. So by looking at the trees, can we tell whether it's windy or not? Yes. Yes. Because if it, was, if, it, if it was windy, trees would be blowing. Yeah, they would be wiggling all over the place and jangling off ah, the very few ah. leaves that they even have left. But they're ah. only moving a little bit, so we say it's a little bit blowy. Just a little bit, not much. And then finally, when we're looking outside, we're looking at the ground, we're looking at the, the pavement, um, again, what people are wearing, and it's what, can you, it, it's what, say that again? It's got puddles in it, the, There are lots of puddles, so what is that telling us? Um, that, it, that, that it's been raining. That it's been raining, yeah, it's been, it hasn't just started raining, it's been raining for a while, that's a good observation, because if we look out here to our right hand side, we can see a puddle. But if we look into the puddle, what else can we tell about the rain? It's still raining. It's still raining. So what kind of a day is it today? A rainy day. A rainy, cold, cloudy day. So what you guys have just done is you have just sat and in a few minutes you have observed the weather by looking for clues outside the window. If it wasn't so wet and if I had not accidentally forgotten your rain suits when we went out and left them at a friend's house on Monday, then we would be able to go outside to observe the weather and to maybe jump in some puddles. However, we don't have our rain suits, so unfortunately we can't. But what you guys are doing, can you talk to me about what you're doing, Frogger? Um, I'm drawing grey clouds. Grey clouds. Now, are the clouds all dotted about? Or are the clouds joined up in one big cloud all together? Joined up in one big cloud together. Okay, so we've got, so we're going to draw that. Um, what are you going to do to show that it's cold? What can you draw to show that it's cold? Rain. 
Rain? Yeah, we can draw the rain on. A little bit of green. Draw some, draw some of the rain and colour to all things. That's a very good idea. Let's add a person to our picture. And then we'll be able to tell, or anyone will be able to tell, what the temperature was like that day. Oh, dear baby G, what's up? What's up? More dice. Wait, what's up? Oh, it's a pencil sharp. But now it's the best. Are you sharpening a pencil? Yes. Excellent. So the activity that we've been looking at is from Mystery Science. Uh, we've moved on from learning about um, DNA and evolution, which we just did a little bit of an introduction to, um, and we're moving on to weather systems now. And we're starting this by becoming weather watchers. Uh, Mystery Science, an excellent resource. Um, and I'm going to help Frogger and Todd um, complete their pictures, or they seem to be doing a very... A very good job. This is something that anybody can do. Uh, you, all you need is some paper, some pens, and a pair of eyes. Yep, true. Uh, you do need a pair of eyes to see anything. Uh, you do need and a pair of eyes to be blind. To see anything, yeah. Otherwise, you would be blind. True. And then I thought, once we've done this, that we might have a game of snakes and ladders. Ooh, I like snakes and ladders. My snakes favorite. and ladders with two dice this time. Ooh, or maybe even three dice. Ooh. Need them jingling. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, we'll find out how Frogger and Todd got on with their pictures a little bit later. Right, so Frogger, can you tell me a little bit about what you've drawn? Who? What is your person wearing? A coat, a scarf, and yeah. she's put her hood up. She's put her hood up. Why is that? Because it's raining. Because it's raining. Okay, beautiful. How about you, Toad? Um, what have you got on your picture? A scarf with two trousers. Um, she's got a full nappy. And a coke. <laughs> and a big, big rain cloud. And a big, big rain cloud. So they're all prepared for being out in the rain, like the people who've gone past. Okay. When you're all done, put your picture somewhere where safe. When the weather changes, you can draw another picture. Then you can look at both pictures to see how the weather changed. Okay. So picture. stay curious. So, um, as the narrator was just saying there, he's just said, right, well, you've got one picture today, but why don't we do exactly the same this time next week? And we'll see what the difference is in the weather. And you see how this girl Amy, who's drawn her pictures on one day, what, what was the weather like on that day? Windy. And what was the weather like on the other day? Sunny. sunny. It was sunny. So it's an interesting way to compare the weather. So how did you find that mystery science? Cool. Cool. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. Did you find the activity easy? to follow yeah, yeah, yeah. and the instructions easy to follow yeah. but importantly did it make you think about your surroundings mm. about what you can see yeah yeah so do you think in future we're going to be weather watchers and pay a bit more attention to the weather yeah 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 i pay lots of attention to the weather already have you like this like this little Ted, like this teddy bear here, who he's got his, he's got his, who's got his hood on. That little teddy bear is actually dressed up as a fisherman. So if you read, can you find the label? If you read the label, yeah. Uh, the teddy bear collection. Please read back of ticket. Fergus the fisherman. Fergus the fisherman. The protectors of fur from ragging waves. Rex has a bright yellow mac and so wester to match his wearing traditional navy blue. Fisherman's sweater underneath. So and what does he have underneath his yellow raincoat? A sweater. A little blue sweater. Fergus the fisherman to protect him from the howling winds when he's out and about at sea. And he also has a pipe because stereotypically fishermen always smoked pipes. Daddy always likes the idea of smoking a pipe. Mm. I think he just likes, he wants to wear a, um, a dressing, a silk um, dressing smoker's jacket and wear a pipe. 
Yeah, just he, in his fantasy, he doesn't smoke at all and has never smoked and would not start smoking because it's terribly bad for your health. But there you go. So he, he just wants to hold a pipe and be fancy. And yeah. also you can go like this. Dun, 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 die. Dun, 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 quite possibly. Okay, well, <laughs> we've finished our mystery science for the day. Uh, Baby G has tipped up all of the pens and is now pulling up the carpet and putting the pens underneath <laughs> the carpet. Um, so we best stop her doing that. So it's uh, back to you guys. So as you can tell, their mystery science is a great resource. You've got everything there that you need. It is free for your first year. You just need an email address. It's very easy to understand. There are so many topics out there. So would we give mystery science a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Excellent. Woo, go with the weather. We're all weather watchers now. Pointing out the weird clouds. There were lots of weird clouds yesterday. Mm -hmm. Remember they were in this weird kind of genie lamp smoke shape field field over a field watch genie genie lamp smoke shape field mm -hmm. you've summed with sheep in, with sheep in. <laughs> yeah we've summed it we've summed it up there okay moving on uh sunday was remembrance sunday and friday was um remembrance day as well on the 11th of november now toad can you please explain to me why we have poppies on the 11th of November. Because they were on top of the graves and they were the first flowers in years. That's very true. At Flanders, the where all of the soldiers were buried, um, the first flowers that appeared were poppies. So poppies became the symbol of remembering. Who are we remembering, Frogger? Um, all the people who gave up their lives to save our country. Wow, that was fresh out of a textbook. <laughs> Very nicely said, yes. Yes, and what did we do on the Friday? Um, Mum printed out some sheets um, where we had to copy off a, a poem, um, colour in a poppy and write why we have the poppies. Yeah, we did just a short, a couple of short activities um, to, it was Lord Byron's, poem um and we also talked about the poppy why we have the poppy and then what did we do for two minutes or it might have been longer than two minutes we had the two minute silence yeah where we all sat and thought about all the people that not only gave up their lives but lost their lives as well because there were a lot of people who were not active in the wars that die as well and animals so that was Remembrance Sunday. We popped along to Gisborough as well and there was a huge crowd of people who were all honouring the fallen soldiers. So that was nice. Um, and home education wise, we did a couple of sheets where we, uh, we were working on spelling, on handwriting, on comprehension and we did a little bit of research. Um, the whole thing only took probably about half an hour but I think it's important to try and remember our national uh, days and also the sacrifice of war but what is better than war sausages anything <laughs> sausages anything is better than war if you've been listening to our podcast for a while you will um, probably pick up on on that link please do do read that book by the way david armand very good book okay so at the weekend we watched a film that we all enjoyed it was a children's film which film was that please toad it was um, Secret Life of Pets. The Secret Life of Pets. Tell me about it, please, Frogger. It was basically about um, pets and how they all act. Um, like it was the main characters were probably um, a cat, a, f and a dog, and um, Max and Duke. The dogs, yes. Um, and they got. They got lost. They were trying to find their way back home. Yeah, because it was all about what animals get up to when their pets leave. It was very accurate and uh, the way that they were describing the dog. Oh, oh, where's she gone? Where's she gone? Don't leave me. I'm so sad. Oh, just like our dog. Pretty much. And then jumps up and down and watch TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or they have parties to rock music with the yeah. poodle. Yeah. Head banging. 
<laughs> what yeah. about the guinea pig? What was wrong with the guinea pig? Oh, he had got lost in the pipes between the flat, and he he kept coming out at Max's house or somebody else's. He couldn't he couldn't find his way back home. He couldn't. He did at the end, thankfully. Otherwise, that would have been a bit sad. But hamsters do that. I don't know if any of our listeners has had hamsters or mice or rodents of any sort. They do tend to sometimes just disappear, and you just have to hope that they reappear again which they usually do within a few days when they're hungry if you lead out a trail of food because they are nocturnal so usually when you're just about to fall asleep at night you hear a scratching and then spend hours trying to uh, move all of your furniture to recover your lost hamster or at least I did in my past so To tell me when you grow up would you like to have a pet yes and what pet would you like to have um not a dog not a dog why not a dog because they would be a pain in the bottom. <laughs> okay, um, not so keen on dogs. So moving on quickly from that, what pet would you have? Um, a hamster. <laughs> a hamster. Any particular sort of hamster? Siberian? Uh, the one other of, one? One of the really round one. A little round fat one? Yeah. Long hair or short hair? Short hair. If I, if I wanted a pet hamster, I'd have one of those mop-like ones, like those dogs which have really long hair, which touch the ground and are a bit like a really fluffy mop. Yeah, they do look a bit crazy, don't they? they are, you could actually dust and clean with those. Really? I think so, yeah. Yeah. They'd probably leave you like little brown marks everywhere you went, but uh, other than that, they'd be quite good for dusting. So, uh, Frogger, what pet would you have if you would have a pet? I don't... Um, I would actually actually like some kittens, but I'd probably go out of them when they turned into a cat, so maybe not a kitten, but um, but probably a pet turtle. <laughs> I like turtles. A turtle that lives in the water or a tortoise? A tortoise. A tortoise. I uh, quite often wish I'd we'd gotten a tortoise. <laughs> I think tortoises are pretty cool. Daddy had one when he was younger and uh, used to escape all the time. Did it? What, what, what is he called? Tommy. Tommy the turtle. <laughs> Tommy the tortoise. Oh. There once was a tortoise called Tommy, who was so incredibly sad. Okay, um, so if you thinking about your pets, if you have a pet, what do you need to do? Feed them, clean them out. <sighs> you need to feed them, clean them out, pick up their poo and look after them. <laughs> You do. Pets can actually be quite a big responsibility. What do you do if you go on holiday? You can either um, give, give, you can either let somebody look after them or bring them with you. Those are the two options. Or if you're a bad owner, then you can just leave them. Yeah, that wouldn't be very good, would it? Especially for dogs. Dogs and cats, they, they need daily attention usually. So, Toad, what do you do if your pet is sick? Clean it out. Yuck. If your pet is sick, clean it out. Um, yeah, yeah, if, if your pet's going to be sick, then you're probably going to have to clear that up. But what if your pet is poorly? Um, I don't know. Who might you take it to? The vet. The vet, thank you. Yes, Frogger? Um, if my pet was poorly, I'd probably take it to the vet um, or give it some medicine, depending how poorly it was. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's very, very knowledgeable instruction there um and yeah you'd probably need to go to the vets in order to get the medication but as long as you um give them their flea treatment and worm them usually in the case of cats and dogs and have their vaccines then hopefully you won't have to get any extra medication for them so do you remember when we took our dog to the vet um i think maybe Do you remember why? No. To stop having babies. Oh, yes. We did have that so that she couldn't have babies with her Uncle Scruff because he was, he was very keen to have babies with her in completely different breeds. It would not have worked out well. So we, uh, we felt that we had to prevent that from occurring, as cute as the puppies would be. I'm not sure our dog would have survived that process. Um, but we also took her for another reason, which was a, um, an emergency once. What was that for? That was when we had a problem with mice. And so, to 
help eradicate the mice, we borrowed a cat for a little while, and the cat decided to scratch the dog in the eye. Oh yeah, I remember that oh, now. Yeah. Yikes! That was a panicked and expensive night. In the end, and did it cost? I think it was a hundred pound just to call the vet out. Even though the vet doesn't come out to your house, you have to pay to call the vet to come out, and then you still have to go to the surgery. Oh, anyway, so yes, pets are expensive, but pets are also very lovely and a nice companion, especially in the term um, when you're thinking about cats and dogs. Uh, they become your friends, your companions. So, would you recommend the secret life of pets to other people? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, that's so. Yeah, quite a few parts of it were very funny. Like when, um, where the poodle was, she was in a posh house and they was listening to classical music. And then when as soon as the poodle's on the left, she put she put on the rock music and she was banging her head off the floor and dancing quite a lot. <laughs> and the wap, when he he was really fun, funny, he was a mad rabbit and he would call him Max. Hi, little dog. Little dog. <laughs> Sorry, he oh, was calling it little dog. I'm just watching oh, in the background. Dog. It's like some kind of crazy sketch going on here because the fly has landed on the equipment that we use to record the podcast, and um, Paul is trying without any force or <laughs> without disturbing the podcast to try and squash the fly, which is the biggest, beastiest fly. It would be like squashing a marble. Um, so yes, you are quite right there, Rowan. Tell us again about what you were saying about the rabbit, please. Well, the rabbit was calling the dog, um, Max. Little dog. No, um, tiny dog. Tiny dog. <laughs> yeah, he, ha- he had a funny voice. He was a very angry rabbit. Yeah. A very, very angry rabbit and an angry pig and a crazy snake and lots of different animals. Certainly. All after the other animals. Because they didn't want to be domesticated. Who knows what domesticated means? Didn't Not me. Ha- they didn't want to have owners. Pretty much, yeah. They didn't want to have to um, cohabitate with people. Cohabitate means to live alongside. Yeah, so it is a pretty good, pretty good uh, film. Moving on, it's time for score, score of, the, of week. the week. Frogger, please explain your score of the week of the this week. week. Um, Grandma and Granddad coming round. Grandma and Grandad coming around. They came to visit us, and what did you do? We went to Saltburn, and we also played um, sh- the shark, shark tig. Um, it's basically a bit like crocodile tig, or a bit like crocodile tig, if you've ever played crocodile tig. Is that where somebody is on the ground, and they are crocodiles, and you have to run between the, the bases without getting caught? Yeah. Pretty much? Then, but they're standing up. But everybody's standing up, yeah, because otherwise you get a wet bottom on the grass. And it'd be hard to chase people when you sat down. Maybe Mm -hmm. you could play it sitting down (laughs) in summer. Or do monkey runs. Oh, I'll have to teach you how to do monkey run. Yeah, teach me how to do monkey run. I think it would be good for my thighs. (laughs) Good workout. Isn't it monster stomp? No, monkey runs is something totally different. And you have to try and keep your bottom in the air. Yeah, that's right. You don't hurt your back either. You have to make sure your posture's right. Okay, Toad, what's your score of the week this week? Grandma and Granddad come in. And what was your highlight of their visit? Playing crocodile tig, no shark tig, and going to Saltburn. And what did we do in Saltburn today? We had a l- well, we went to the woods and we played in the mini park. Um, yeah, what did we do in the in the stream? We played with the stones. We, we trying? Ju- we, yeah, we were chucking them into the water, and if you got them to the other side, you would get ten points. Yeah, we were trying to hit a tree, and we were trying to skim the stones as well. Can you tell us about Grandad's cake, please, Toad? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> it wasn't a really funny cake. Okay, Frogger, can you tell us about Grandad's cake? It was walrus and rose. It was a very unusual flavour. The icing, I, would, I didn't really like the icing. It tasted like soap. Um, It wasn't walnut cake. It was oh, green. It was pistachio. 
pistachio cake and it had pink icing and the pink icing was rose flavoured. Not very nice. It tasted exactly like soap. It did taste a little bit like soap. It was a little bit disappointing, I think. But interesting, you do have to try these things. Um, but it wasn't completely unpleasant either. Um, it, personally, I would rather have carrot cake. I'm, I'm not sure that rose belongs in sweet puddings. But uh, if somebody out there has a killer recipe for it, please do share it with us um, and we'll give it a go and let you know what we think. Okay, so I think that's about all we've got time for this week. Baby G has fallen asleep on my arm. So that's probably a good cue for us to go. Is there anything else that you would like to add, Toad? Nope. Frogger? <laughs> yes. Um you might not you might want to delete this. I can edit it out, it's okay. Um I think something that I also really enjoyed today, when Rowan was just standing on the sofa, he fell off without hurting himself and without noticing, he did a big stumble and it was really funny, without hurting yeah. himself. So Toad fell off the sofa? Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. And he didn't hurt himself? No, no. But that was really funny. Yeah, I think I might do it again. <laughs> okay, well it probably won't be as funny the second time round. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Nope. No. Okay, great. Well, as I said, that's all we've got time for. Uh, please do leave us some feedback, leave us some comments. We do apologise again for last week. And we hope that Uncle David, um, who we did give a shout out to, we hope that he had a very nice birthday down in London. Um, so that's all we've got. Yeah, I already said that. <laughs> and uh, already said it about three times. So I guess it's time to say goodbye. 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 See you later, alligators. See you in a while, crocodile. You're listening to the Home Education Podcast. UK. Where <laughs> I forgot who I am. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, try that again. Uh.